Hi, right, welcome to Newcastle Central. I had a pretty fun mail delivery to start off the week here. Uh, first thing Monday morning, I got these in the mail. I was pretty excited at the end of last week when I got an email from Hattons to say that this order had been processed. I've had these on pre-order for quite a while now. I can't remember if these were announced as part of the Hombi 2020 range, so back at the start of January of last year. I feel like they may have been. Uh, so whatever it was, I've had these on pre-order pretty much since they came out. This is the uh, Class 43 HST with the buffers fitted. Uh, so the driving, so City of Edinburgh is the power car there. And uh, there are photos of HSTs with buffers fitted like this in Newcastle. So they did end up on the East Coast Main Line, depending on what they were up to. Uh, so I know that the, the, they have been out on the prototype as well. But I'm very excited to see these. I am a sucker for HSTs. Haven't even opened the box yet, so let's open it up, check it out, and see what they look like. All right, so this is now with that power car out of the box. And pretty much like a lot of the recent... Hombi HSTs in the last few years, it looks and feels and wears almost exactly the same. The buffers are a little bit different look, looking at them. Uh, you know, on the prototype themselves, they do look a little weird because usually you don't see HSTs with those buffers and you don't see HSTs at all now. But it is very much uh, the same tooling, I believe, as the HSTs that they brought out oh, about a year and a half or so ago. Uh, they came with TDS Valenta fitted, the Valenta sounds already fitted on the TDS sound chips. Almost the exact same model, uh, to be honest, I, I, I imagine, uh, other than with those buffers fitted. I haven't put the detailing parts on the front. There is a fun little bag that comes with it, and it does actually include uh, a picture of what they should look like, which I feel is kind of a step up on uh, a lot of the times when Bachman put out the detailing pieces on the Class 37s and the 47s and stuff like that. There's a 37 parked up just behind there on, uh, on Platform 4 that has all the detailing pieces fitted, but it doesn't really show you a picture of what they look like. So at least on these HSTs, Hornby have included what those detail pieces would be, uh, and they do have uh, different couplers that you can put on there as well if you would like to, rather than the tension locks. Um, but this is the city of Edinburgh, and then the unpowered uh, car that goes with it. I'm trying to move out just a little bit so you can see that one. So there's the two of them together, and they do look pretty good. Uh, like I say, I am a sucker for HSTs, especially in Swallow Library. That is the one, to me, that just evokes so many memories of being a kid and riding these things up and down the East Coast Main Line. So don't have the detailing pieces on yet, don't have DCC decoders in them yet. I am tempted actually to take out one of the TTS decoders uh, from that Homebrew release a year or so ago, because uh, they had them in both the powered and the unpowered car. And really, I never run the second one other than for lights, and so I could probably just drop an air pin decoder in there. Uh, but looking at the models, I'm sure that some people could probably just pick out problems with them. Uh, you know, some of the color bands are too thin, too thick, or a wrong shade of beige or whatever. Uh, to me, I think they're very good. Uh, excellent build quality. Uh, you know, we'll see what they're like when they actually run, but visually they look very good. Uh, no real problems with the paint. On them, everything looks neat and sharp. Like I said, the buffers do just look a little awkward, but I don't really think that's necessarily a fault of the model. I think that is more just that is what the prototype looks like uh, when you check out the pictures of these with the buffers fitted. Um, so I want to get uh, decoders put in these. I'm just going to start out with a regular um, DC running for a little bit, probably, and then get a DCC decoder fitted, just so I can see these starting to move around. And then, like I say, I might play around and then switch over and check out what it might sound like with uh, one of those Valenta TTS sound units in them. So let's get on the detailing pieces uh, and get uh, DCC decoder fitted and see what it looks like then. All right then, so there we go with those detailing pieces fitted, uh, those vac pipes, and oh my days were they fiddlier than I was expecting them to be. Uh, I'm going to give Homie a little bit of a ding because at the top of the vac pipes where they hook in, to kind of the buffer beam assembly. They try to put a little daub of yellow or red paint on them. And uh, I mean, it's a little bit too thick for them to really attach in easily. So yeah, a little bit fiddly than I was expecting. Not really sure if they add much either. They are very, very fine. 
Uh, I'm not sure how well they're going to hold up either. They're so thin, so I need to be very careful trying to move those around. Uh, I don't think they're going to catch on any of the point work or anything like that. We'll see once we start running around. Um, so yeah, these may be short-lived. I'm going to put them on see what they look like. And uh, yeah, heaven help you if you drop these things onto a dark floor while you're trying to attach them, especially when you do it twice like I did. Uh, but like I said, a little bit different. I thought it was worth fitting them so we could see what that they, they look like especially since uh, these buffer fitted hsts are a little bit different by themselves anyway so i think that completes the look just a little bit and uh, now i'm going to try and get a dcc decoder into it and have them running around the layout and start to see them moving around all right i'm not all fancy with one of those foam uh, locomotive service and cradles to do this so i just kind of turn it upside down and use the polystyrene packing and uh, and that kind of paper wrap to hold them in place. But like a lot of uh, home BHSTs, there are four screws, um, two on either side of the bogey, and so you just kind of pivot the bogies out of the way to be able to get to the four screws. And once they're unscrewed, flip the locker over, and uh, that whole shell just lifts right off, and you can get to the inside. Right, this is then with the shell taken off. You're going to be a little bit careful because of how the lights are attached on the front. And so when you're taking it off, you kind of lift up on the back of the shell, kind of pivot it a little bit, and then slide it forward because under here by the cab uh, kind of hooks in on the front of the body itself. Um, so yeah, be a little bit careful when you take it off because of those lights. And then right here, this is then the 8-pin decoder. There is plenty of room there to put in speaker enclosure if you want to as well. So I'm just going to put in a regular DCC decoder for now, uh, just so we can get this up and running and see it moving around. I'm also going to go ahead and do the uh, non-powered car too, so that we could get the bi-directional lighting going on them um you know let them run around for a little bit of a while kind of uh, run themselves in and then we'll hook them up to some of the mark three coaches and we can actually see the hsts moving around for real like they would have. all right so i should probably have done this with the power car that was maybe a little bit more interesting because it would have had the motor in it uh, but this is taking apart two different hsts just for fun so this one is the new hsts with buffers fitted like you can see on the front there and this is the HST uh, Valentis from yeah about a year and a half or so ago. No buff is fitted. And uh, control boards look to be pretty much the exact same. This already has the TTS sound fitted. And so it looks like uh, exact same chassis on the back. Interestingly, the front is a little bit different between the two of them, though. Um, the one without the buff is fitted here. Uh, a little bit of a cutout on the plastic front and that is not present on the ones with buffers fitted so it is a little bit different and then it looks like um, you know, some of then the front of the shell is cut away in order to accommodate that as well which again is why it looks a little bit awkward but that's not necessarily a fault of the model that is just uh, the prototype does look a little bit different uh, but everything else it does look like Hornby has, has pretty much reused that exact same tooling uh, which is not at all a surprise. It's pretty much what I thought was going to be. Um, but we'll get DCC chip fitted into this one. Um, why did I take this one apart? I mean, like I said, because I'm probably going to steal that TDS sound chip at some point to see what it sounds like <laughs> running in the uh, HST with buffers. So I'm going to get one here, and then we'll get uh, the pair of those new cars onto the track and run them around for a little bit.
All right then, so with the pretty torrential rain outside, which hopefully isn't making too much of a noise on the video, got this new HST parked up in the station building here. Uh, there is still some other work that, that I've got going on around the layout, but I wanted to focus this video just on this new HST overall. Very happy with it. Like I said, it's pretty much the exact same loco that Hornby had out about a year and a half ago for the Valentos, just a little bit different on the front of the body shell there with those buffers fitted. I am finding that it's having a little bit of a hard time uh, pulling some of the locos. It doesn't have an awful lot of pulling power. It's kind of the same that I found with the Volantas, unless you have very, very clean track, and the wheels on this should be spotless. Uh, it does seem to struggle a little bit at slow speed, coming around some of the corners at the kind of edges of the layout here and the Redis is maybe a little bit tight but it's still set track on those pieces not flex track so most of the curves it does no problem with it's fine moving in and out of the station through all of the point work and stuff like that it's not catching any of uh, those detailing pieces on the front any of those back houses they all seem to be uh, just fine they've kind of held on as much as I thought they were pretty delicate you just have to be careful if you be picking it up and moving it around, hand of God, moving things around the layout. So overall happy with these. Um, for the price, I, I thought they might have been a little bit cheaper. I don't remember exactly what they were because I just had them sitting on pre-order. Um, I guess they probably are about the difference by the time you took off the TTS sound chips. I think these were maybe £229 versus £279, pounds, which is what TTS seems to come with, if I remember correctly. But I could be completely wrong on those prices. Um, everything for me gets converted to dollars, and then you have shipping, and you take off VAT and different sales tax. And so, yeah, prices are somewhat meaningless. But like I say, if you are a fan of the HSTs, these are very cool, especially because they are a little bit different with having those buffers fitted. They did run on the East Coast Man Line, so if you're a modeler in that era, in that region, uh, they would have been just fine. If you're West Coast, whatever, uh, I'm pretty sure you can find a photo of pretty much any kind of prototype uh, to see these fit. So, thanks for watching and following along. Hope you've been enjoying it. Please do subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, I've got a lot of work that's going on around the station building here. Uh, I've got pretty much all the signal control lights moving, which you might have seen in action as the trend's moving in and out there. I am also working on sensor control. Uh, I've been having some good comments from people on how I can do some of that work. And then the station building itself, which you can kind of see in the background, some of those detailing pieces uh, are also underway as well. So do subscribe and follow along. Let me know what you're thinking, and we'll be back again pretty soon. Bye-bye.